Hey, it's Jared with Gear and Light. I have five tips to help you pass your Part 107 drone certification exam. Now, I just recently had to retake the exam. Up until 2021, you had to recertify every two years by taking the exam over again. And this was my third time taking the exam because I've been at this for a little while, but there were a lot of interesting changes that I thankfully was prepared for when taking the exam this year and was able to uh, re-up and continue on as a commercial drone pilot. But there are changes and things that uh, are no longer going to require us to go and test. But if this is your first time testing for the Part 107, or maybe you're wanting to test for the Part 107 so that you can be a certified drone pilot and fly one of these little guys uh, and get paid for it, then uh, there are some things that I found really helped in prepping to take the exam, and I wanted to talk about those in this video. You know, there are tons of information on YouTube about the Part 107, lots of really long uh, kind of study guides or whatnot that walk you through everything, but I found that a lot of them are kind of outdated now that this has been a thing for a little while, especially this year with all of the changes that took place here here in 2021, uh, even including not having to recertify every two years. So my number one tip is to find current information because much has changed this year. If you go back and watch some of the really popular videos that have been up on YouTube for a year, two years, even longer, there's some good information in there, but it's lacking a lot of the questions that are going to be on this, uh, on this updated exam. I think that the FAA it was utilizing each of these stages in people having to come and recertify to make sure that they're staying current with the new information that's coming out. This whole uh, thing with the drones and having to be certified by the FAA in order to do it commercially is something that's been a change in progress. Things have been moving and changing uh, every, it seems like every six months or so, there's something new coming out and being added. And so the questions and things that they focus on seem to change. The tests that I've taken each year or each two years have been completely different and have included questions that I have not seen before. So I highly recommend uh, finding new information that is updated and make sure that they are included including some of the things that are talked about in the 14 CFR Part 107 guide that I'll talk about here in a few moments. So number two is that once you are learning some of these things, some of these minimums or limitations and stuff like that, go out and fly your drone with them. You know, it's interesting because you can study and become Part 107 certified and never have flown a drone before. I actually have a friend who did that. He needed to start flying a drone for work and went out and got certified before he had even had a drone, before he even owned a drone. So it's very possible to do that, unlike going and getting your private pilot's license where you have to spend a lot of time learning how to fly the plane before they actually will certify you. So with the drone, I recommend taking your drone out and flying it, utilizing the limitations, the minimums, all of the things that you will be learning about. For example, not being able to fly over 400 feet. Take your drone up to 400 feet and stop right there at 400 feet and visualize that. As you go and visualize and take these, these limitations, these numbers, these uh, uh, hard you know limitations that we have to remember and put them into practice, it's going to be easier for you to remember them because they're not just a number that you just read or a stat or a limitation or something like that that you just read. They're now something that you have taken your drone and actually flown and uh, experienced what that felt like. And it's going to be easier for you to remember those numbers. And a lot of them are numbers or, um, you know, is it A, B, or C? I mean, these questions are multiple choice and it makes it much easier for you to remember which option is the correct option when you have experienced that with your drone. So one of the things that I, you know, did very early on 
was stick to those limitations because when I got my first camera drone, I was flying it everywhere and as high as I can get it to go and doing all sorts of stuff. And so those limitations were not set until the FAA came in and said, hey, if you're going to do that and get paid for it, really, if you're going to do it at all, but if you're going to do it and get paid for it, here are our guidelines. So I had to retrain myself and make sure that I was sticking within those guidelines. And it made it much easier for me to recognize what those were and even remember them when I went out and put them into practice before even becoming Part 107 certified the first time. So number three is to go online and read the 14 CFR Part 107 Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems Guide. It's available online and it's free and you can also download it as a PDF or print it right from the website. I'll make sure to link to that down below as well as linking to some other resources that I found were extremely useful for learning these things things. You know, the the Part 107 uh, guide is not fun reading. It's pretty boring, but the information that's in there is going to be on the test, and you'll want to make sure that you are learning the way that the FAA speaks because those questions are also written by the FAA. And so if you haven't read the 14 CFR Part 107 guide and all you've done is listened to somebody else's course and hopefully they're speaking the same way that the FAA does because if they're not and they're trying to break these concepts down and make them easier to understand, you may understand them, but you may not understand them in the way that the FAA Uh, want you to understand them and the way that they're going to regurgitate that back into the form of test questions. And that can be challenging. I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, those questions were really hard to understand. Well, they'd be a little bit easier to understand if you read the guide that they provided because you would understand the way that they speak uh, before going in and getting surprised on a test. Number four is to take practice tests. Now, there's an app that I leaned on heavily the last two times I had to take the uh, the exam, and that is the uh, pilot, the 107 Pilot app. I'll make sure to link to that down below. This app has a, a guide w- within it, and it also has the ability for you to take the practice test. And I found, for me, uh, once I understand the concepts, Uh, the best thing for me to do is to go in and get used to taking those test questions. Those questions, there are, I think, 300 in there, all the questions that are available, and you're only going to be tested on a smaller portion uh, of those questions, and you have to uh, be okay with any of those questions because it will be a, a variable amount of those questions is it will be a variety of those questions and you're not going to know exactly what questions you're going to get. So I highly recommend testing yourself on those 300. With this app, you can go in and you can do chunks of 50 questions at a time. You could do chunks of 100 questions at a time. And it also times you as well so that you know how long you're taking. You have two different modes, one that allows you to see the uh, responses right away so that you can correct yourself uh, as you move from one question to the next or the uh, other version, which is more like taking the actual test, which doesn't give you the correct answers until you get to the very end. I highly recommend starting off in that study guide mode that gives you the correct answer as you select the answer, so that way you can correct yourself right in the moment. When you get to the point where you're getting at least an 80% or maybe even more on the practice test and study guide, I recommend going into the standard version of the test that doesn't give you the answers to the questions until you finish the test. And then when you are getting at least 80% every single time that you do, you know, between 50 and 100 question chunks, then you are more than ready to go and actually take the test. You can go online and find a certified testing center that is near you. Thankfully for me, mine was very close. And because it was very close and I've always wanted to get my private pilot's license, I started 
working towards getting my private pilot's license and I'm now about halfway there. So it was really kind of cool that the testing center is also the same place that I can go and learn how to fly a real plane. And so now I'm working on getting that licensing. So the last one is to be well rested. You know, these questions that the FAA gives you are, uh, I don't want to say they're trick questions, but they're written in a tricky way that can make it easy for you to choose the incorrect answer because it sounds right. And that's really what the FAA is trying to get at is, do you know, do you really know the things that we're trying to make sure that you know? And that's why they write the questions the way that they do. They can be frustrating and annoying, but they do it that way because they want you to really understand. And it's hard sometimes to read between those lines when you're not well rested. So for me, I took the course first thing in the morning. I signed up for the earliest test time that I could, which was 8.30 in the morning, and I took the test first thing in the morning when I knew I was fresh, and I went to bed early that night knowing that I wanted to get the best sleep that I could get so that I can be as uh, aware and ready for those questions in the morning. And thankfully I was, and I passed the test with flying colors and was able to continue flying my drone commercially. Now, thankfully, from here forward, I don't have to retest again, and anybody who has taken the Part 107 certification as of, I think it's sometime in April of 2021, now we just have to keep up on our education. We can go to the FAA website and we can continually learn the new things that they're putting out and stay current instead of having to go and retest every two years, which I'm very thankful for. So I look forward to that process of staying current by learning instead of having to go back and reread everything and perhaps even being tested on stuff that I don't necessarily have to put into practice every day um, when flying a drone like reading sectional charts and stuff like that. Of course, I'm learning all about that now as a student private pilot, but as a drone pilot, those are things that are interesting to know, and they are things you need to know if you're going to fly in and around those areas. But for most of the areas in, in the United States, it's information that you probably won't have to go to very often. So I'm thankful that we can stay current in other ways now, and I look forward to that. I hope that this video helped you uh, just think about preparing for your Part 107 a little differently than what I've seen a lot of these other courses, which is just cram or just watch this thing over and over again. I think really it comes down to understanding the way that FAA speaks, taking the practice tests until you are continuously getting an 80% or above, and then going immediately and taking the course. If I had one bonus tip for you, I would say don't spread this out over a long period of time. I would say go on and book that time for a test and then force yourself to learn and do all of these things within that time frame. Chances are you're not going to be able to find a testing date for at least a couple of weeks, and really all you need is two weeks of being able to focus on this for an hour or two uh, every evening or every day leading up to that test, and you'll pass it without a problem. It's not that challenging. It just takes reading what the FAA has made available, taking the practice test so that you get in the familiarity of those questions and the way that they're written and the way that they're being needing to be answered so that you can go and pass this test and get out there flying uh, your drone and earning some money and just enjoying the process of all of that. So I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel here on Gear and Light, and I hope to see you back in the next one soon. Take care.